Hello viewers, I'm SB, and this is Petricor. Or, or Petricor, uh, okay listen, internet sources disagree a little bit on the correct way to pronounce this word. The makers of this board game have a Kickstarter running right now, and on their Kickstarter page they have a video where they have it pronounced Petricor, so I'm gonna say Petricor, even though I think that, <laughs> that might not be correct. It's fine, it doesn't matter, it's a very minor detail. So, Petricor is a board game. I mentioned a Kickstarter, but it's not a new board game. This came out a couple of years ago. The Kickstarter that they're running right now is for the game's third and final expansion, and also for a deluxe version of the game that contains all the promos and expansion content and fancy versions of the components and stuff. Um, so if you see, if you like what you see here uh, and you want to get in on that, there's a link in the description of this video to the Kickstarter. Uh, there's also going to be a link to this tabletop simulator mod that we're playing with. It is truly excellent. It's a really, really good mod. It's a great way to play the game for free. But also, remember, if we want them to keep making cool board games, we do have to sometimes buy the cool board games. So if you have a good time with it, consider purchasing a physical copy. Uh, also, I mentioned that there's expansions, you can see here. Uh, for our first game, we're just going to be playing the base game. But we're going to do a couple of these videos today, and we'll add in the expansions uh, as we continue playing. Next, ga next game, we'll try out the honeybee thing, and then the game after, we'll try the cows expansion, which is the thing that the Kickstarter is running for. So, let's get to it. If you've not seen um, my board game content before, I'm not going to open with a full ex explanation of the rules. We're just going to start playing the first turn, and I'll explain it as we go. And hopefully by the end of the first turn, you will have a, a good idea of the shape of the game. If you have seen my board game content before, you might be noticing that this is not the 200 component, 3 hour Vital Lacerda monster that I usually play. It's a slightly different kind of game. It's definitely smaller in scale, but I think there's a lot of interesting strategic depth here. And also, just look at it. This game is so beautiful. There's a real, like, CO2 feel to the central board that I really appreciate, and then all of the uh, all of the plant tiles and the cards and everything are just so pretty. So, in a solo game of Petricor, we have these plants down here. These are called the fields. There are six fields arranged in two columns of three, uh, and each round starts with our automated opponent called the Southern Winds taking a turn. I've already done the first Southern Winds turn. Now it's on us. Uh, and what we do on our turn is we play cards from our hand. You can see here we have four suits of cards. Frost, Sun, Wind, and Rain. Uh, each of these suits has an action associated with it, so we're going to play a card to take the associated action. We have some reference cards over here for that, so in the top half you can see what's going to happen. Uh, we're probably going to lead Frost. And again, by the end of the turn, you'll have some idea what we're doing here, and, and these decisions will make a little bit more sense. For now, I'm just going to do stuff. So, when we play Frost, we take the action of creating a light cloud, placing one of our drops in it, and then placing it on a field that does not currently have a cloud. So we'll grab this cloud, and I think we're going to go for the wheat here. When we take one of our water drops, place it in the cloud. You can see the mod has these neat components that... The clouds tabulate the drops that are in them, and if you click this button, it's it's a button, not just a label, uh, it actually rains the drop through onto the field below. It's very handy. Uh, and then after we take the action of the card, uh, we vote. So you can see the symbols at the top of the card tell us what, what we can do with our vote. Uh, when you play a card, you can vote for the type of weather the card represents, or the next type of weather in the sequence, or, this third symbol here, tells us that we can reduce the harvest count. The harvest count is uh, these dice in the middle of the table. We're not going to worry about this right now because we're, uh, we're not taking that action. We are voting. So, uh, oh, I forgot, to, I forgot to vote for the neutral player. When they did their turn, they were supposed to vote Sun. So, I think that makes me kind of want to vote Sun as well. At the end of the round, after all of our card plays are done, two of the weather effects in the middle of the board are going to be executed, and it's the two that have the most votes on them. And at that time, the player with the majority of, of the votes on those will get some points, and we, we would like that to be us. So I'm going to also vote Sun. We're going to challenge here. Uh, and then, 
after we take our one mandatory action, we're allowed to take a second action if we want. Uh, but to do that, we have to discard two cards of the uh, of the suit of the action. So, I think I would like to. Hmm, maybe sun, so that we can get some more droplets in that cloud. A cloud with one drop in it is unlikely to score us any points. Let's start with that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll play two suns to do the sun action. And I've managed to drop these in such a way that they're not stacking. Come on, tabletop simulator, play nice. There we go. Uh, so, the sun action is add two of your drops into a cloud you are present in. Let's just go ahead and... Fill this one up. So drops that are in a cloud are not worth points. They're not worth points until they get down onto the field and cause the plants to grow. Uh, you can see here on the field an indication of the number of water droplets that it takes for that field to become scorable. And then once the field is scorable, at harvest time, the player who has the largest number of droplets on it gets the, uh, the reward here. The, second, the player with the second largest number of droplets gets this reward, and so on. Uh, so, most of these fields are going to require a fair amount of water. We have a couple of plants that only require two, but most of them require require a little bit more effort. So we got to make sure we're filling our clouds up. And then, just like with the other card, we get to vote. So we can vote sun or wind, or uh, we can pull the harvest number down. I'm just going to vote sun again. We're going to take the majority on this action that is likely to occur. All right, and that's our turn. So the action phase continues. You are, sorry, I have to look at the reference here. Uh, I just learned this game this morning, so I may make some rules mistakes. If you see me making rules mistakes, feel free to leave that in the comments below uh, so as to improve the other games that we're going to record today. Uh, and also I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to look at the rules from time to time because I don't know all the symbology yet. So that is card number one. Take one neutral drop from the supply and place it directly onto the selected tile. So for anything like this, where there are multiple le legal targets, we roll the die to figure out which tile it's targeting. And the way they're numbered is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So tile six gets a droplet from the neutral player, and the neutral player votes rain and reduces the harvest count. So one of these dice goes down to one, and reducing the harvest count earns you a point. Uh, if you reduce one of the harvest dice to zero, which is what this is depicting, you get an additional point for that. And to give you some context for the scoring, uh, in the two previous games I played, um, the winning player was in the 30s. So a couple of points here and there adds up. It's a, it's a large percentage of your final score. All right, so that's the solo player's turn. That's the Southern Winds' turn. And now it is on us once again. So we've done Frost and Sun actions already. The Wind action just moves a cloud from one space to an adjacent space. You can only move clouds that you are present in, though. And I don't really want to move us out of our cloud. I like our cloud. So I think we might want to take the Frost action again here. Now, you probably note, we do not have any Frost cards. Anytime you want to play a, play a card of a particular suit, you can use any two cards as a card of, a, of the chosen suit. So we could like, to say, I'm going to play one frost card, we can just play two rain as though it is one frost. And they don't have to be the same suit, it could be a rain and a wind. I'm going to do it this way though, we're going to play one frost. So let's get a new cloud and throw it on... Uh, I'm going to say this cactus right here. Put it over top of this cactus, throw a drop on there, and then it is time to vote. So because we played frost, we can vote frost or sun or lower the harvest count. I'm going to vote... I know we're ahead on sun right now, but we know that there's a card in the Southern Winds deck. Uh, if we If we look over here, there is a card that has two sun votes on it. So that is certainly dangerous. We're not we're not safely in the majority here. We might still lose this. What do we want to do about that? You know what? Looking at the situation a little bit more, I'm wondering if maybe 
I'm going to place this cloud over here instead. That's, that's going to be our frost action. I have a plan. Uh, and then we're going to vote... We're going to vote Sun. I'm just going to try to maintain our majority here. No, I changed my mind. We're going to vote Frost. We're going to try to make Frost a thing. We're going we're gonna to try to win a vote over there. Uh, and then for our second action, let's play Wind. So we'll play one Wind and then these two cards together as a second Wind. And the Wind action lets us move a cloud that we are in, uh, a cloud that we are present in to an adjacent space. I'm going to move our cloud into this space, I think. I'm going to challenge Blue on this. So, when two clouds collide, uh, you are left with a single thunder cloud that contains all of the drops that all of the colliding clouds had in them. Uh, the fact that it's a thunder cloud doesn't mean anything by itself, but some game effects will only affect thunder clouds. Uh, and we're going to see that pretty soon, I think. Uh, and then, I mean, that's it. Our, our turn is over, for sure. We are out of cards. So the Southern Wind player gets another turn, and they play... Oh, interesting. What is that? <laughs> what does this say? Move a cloud with only neutral raindrops from the selected tile directly to the tile southeast of it. Okay, so there is only one legal target for this. There's only one cloud that only has their drops. So this thing moves to the southeast. And then they vote wind once. That's actually pretty great for us. For reasons that you are about to see. Uh, and then it becomes my turn. When it is the player turn, instead of taking actions, the player may choose to pass. If the player passes, the action phase for the turn, or the action phase for the round ends. So we're doing that, we're passing because we can't do anything else. So we are now out of the action phase. After the action phase, let me roll this back here so you can see how the game describes it. Uh, after the action phase, it is... Uh, that was phase one. Now it's the weather phase. Where is that page? In the book. Sorry, I'm still a little... Like I said, still a little fresh with this. Okay, here we go. The weather phase. The weather affects the state of the fields and affects every player whether they voted for that weather or not. So, exactly two weather spaces with the most total votes are now resolved. Uh, you can see there's a clear winner, but second place is a tie. In the solo game, the player gets to determine tie breaks. So we're going to be executing this phase and this phase. Uh, so what happens when we resolve a, a weather effect is, uh, after you determine which effects are being resolved, you go around the circle. The circle determines the order of execution. So you can see the arrow here indicates that we start with frost, uh, and when the frost weather occurs, all light clouds become thunderclouds. Okay, frost weather, they have a handy button for that. Now they're all thunderclouds. Uh, and then, after you resolve the effect of a, uh, a weather space, uh, whoever has the most votes on that weather space gets to move their voting wins peg up, and then all of the votes on that space are removed. And then we're going to do the same thing uh, here after executing this weather. So this one's a little bit different. In Solo, some of the weather has a slightly different effect, uh, which is described here. On the left side there, Sun. The neutral player first doubles its presence in all clouds, then you get to double your drops in one of them. Uh, in a normal game, it's just everybody gets to double their, their drop count in, in one. So uh, Southern Winds goes from one to two here, and from two to four here. Oh, I just dropped that clean out of the cloud. Ah, this cloud has a faulty wall. There we go. Uh, and then we get to double our presence in one cloud. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's worthwhile to double up here. I think we're not going to bother with that. Uh, we'll, we'll double over here. Here's why. When this cloud rains out, we already have enough water in it to make the wheat grow, and there's no bonus for having more droplets on a tile. It's just whoever gets the most gets the first reward, whoever gets the second most gets the second reward. So right now, we're a clear runaway victor here. Putting three more water droplets on this is going to have zero value. But adding one more droplet here might allow us, with like a sun action, to challenge blue for supremacy on this tile, 
and as you can see, the difference between first place scoring and second place scoring on Cotton is significant. So I feel very strongly about that. And then uh, we rack up another vote win, and these get deleted. So at the end of the game, your voting wins pawn is worth points. The points are depicted on the spaces there. You can see some of these values are pretty significant in a game that might end with the winner having 35 or so points. Uh, and then any voting space that does not get resolved, the votes remain on it. So Blue's got a little bit of a head start on us now. Uh, then we enter the harvest phase. Down here in the lower left of the page, the harvest phase occurs if one or more of the following is true. The three harvest dice show a harvest icon, it is the end of the final round, or the neutral player is out of water. Uh, none of those things are true. There's still, there's only one die here that's showing the harvest face, and you have plenty of, uh, plenty of water, and we are only in round one. So, uh, the harvest phase does not occur, and then we enter cleanup. During the cleanup phase, the round tracker moves forward. You can see it's quite a short game. Uh, if there was a harvest, the harvest dice are re-rolled, and then we are dealt a new hand for the next round. And that's it. We are now in round two. We're a quarter of the way through the game already. All right, so we always start with the neutral player. Neutral player plays... This is a, a cloud that has mixed drops moves, I believe. Cloud that has drops from more than one player. Yeah, number seven. Move a cloud that has both neutral drops and your drops from the selected tile directly northwest. Uh, if the cloud is already in the first column, move it only north. And that is the case here. So it just goes from the cotton onto the potato, which is actually pretty... That's a pretty big deal. Because you can see uh, second place scoring on the potato is really high. Uh, this is kind of fantastic for us. Except that it does mean that the extra drop we put in this cloud is maybe a little wasted. Um, yeah, that's really, really good. And then two wind votes for blue. That's going to be tough to catch up to. I think we're pretty likely to see blue win a vote on wind here. And the wind weather effect is... In reverse turn order, move any one drop from a field to an adjacent field. It's pretty hard to move the drops around once they're out of clouds, so that's a, that's a big deal. And then in addition... Uh, yeah, after resolving your wind weather effect, uh, check each of the tiles 3 through 6. On each checked tile, move one of your drops from that tile to the adjacent tile to the north, so it will shift our stuff around even more. And that is pretty likely to happen. It's, it's unlikely we're going to be able to get two other weather spaces up above three discs. Hmm. Alright, well, something to keep in mind. So... Blue has one disc on the coffee, but it takes a lot to activate coffee. You can see it needs four, uh, four droplets even to get into sprouting. And then once it's sprouting, it needs for the sun weather effect to happen for it to reach its full scoring potential. I'm a little worried, if I'm being honest. This cactus is potentially worth a lot of points. So the cactus is interesting because it's worth a lot of points if it's watered just enough, but if it's overwatered, it switches states into a, uh, a less valuable state. And unfortunately, with blue having two discs here already, two drops, we're not going to be able to take the majority while leaving it in the valuable state, but maybe the plan is just we flood that cloud with water and make the, make the cactus not very valuable. Honestly, it's not a terrible idea. Uh, oh, we don't have any wind. We didn't draw a single wind. That's going to complicate that plan a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do here. Let's start with a frost. Because I want to get a cloud over this cotton. Now that the cotton is free, let's, uh, let's try to claim first, pe first place points on that ourselves. And then we can vote Frost or Sun, or we can pull Harvest points. Honestly, Frost and Sun are both looking like pretty weak. You know what? Let's reduce this Harvest die. The Harvest is actually looking pretty okay for us. So we'll drop this down to the zero face, and doing that is worth two points. Uh, and then you. Oh, sorry. No, not you yet. Let's, I didn't see that. We have another action to play. We should like play all of our turn. Play all of our turn here. <clears throat> D 
do I just want to do sun? And get our cloud up to a, uh, a reasonable value. Another thing we could plan on is colliding more, or running more water into this, uh, for this reason. Let me find the appropriate page here. Here we go. Uh, whenever two clouds collide, they merge and become one thundercloud. We saw that already. If a thundercloud ever holds eight or more water drops, it overflows and all of the water immediately rains out of it. So, what we could do is try to push this cloud to eight, just to get, you know, get the water on the ground and get it into scoring position. But we'd really like to see another blue disc in there before we do that, I suppose. You know what? Let's just take a sun action right now. And we'll just we'll just seed this cloud a whole bunch. And then Do I want to vote wind and try to get in on that? If we Oh, you know what would be really cool? If the sun effect were to happen here and blue's droplets were to double in all their clouds, it would actually be really bad for them. I'm going to vote sun off of our sun play. Because it'd be really cool if we could make the sun weather effect happen. Obviously, a lot of that's going to come down to what comes off the top of this deck. Okay, you are voting double frost. Which thing is that? That is, create a new cloud with two drops. Okay, so because this, this has a bunch of different tiles it could occur in, we roll. Alright, tile three. So if you roll a tile that is already that is not a valid target, you just count forward until you find one that is a valid target. So in that tile, new cloud with two neutral raindrops. Okay. That's a little bit scary. That could end with um with blue actually being able to score the coffee. That makes me a little nervous. Uh, and then two winter votes. I think our uh, our era of voting dominance is coming to an end here. <laughs> okay, what do we want to do? Man, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to play wind. I think we... I think we might. So let's see. We could play rain and then wind. Or we could play frost and then wind. We play wind and then rain. We have a lot of options. I just, I'm not 100% sure. Because I kind of... I'm thinking now maybe we just want to collide this cloud with that cloud. It is a shame, though, that we can't do sun and then wind. So if we could put five drops in this and then run it into that, it would be pretty handy. Oh, right. The, um, the sun vote that we wanted to try to force... We'd better play a Frost. Frost will allow us to vote Sun. Ugh, frost is also not very good for us in this situation. I mean, we could just play Sun, I guess. If we play Sun, though, we're not going to have enough cards left to play Wind as well. Uh, we've, we've got a real tricky position here. All right, let's... Because you have, yeah, you have a disc on that tile already. So if we were to, if we were to run this over here... We would be, when the rain happens, we would each be at three on the coffee. And we would just tie for points. You would, you would not get five points unchallenged. I feel pretty strongly about you not having five points unchallenged. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna play to rain as wind. No, we're gonna play rain and frost as wind. So we're gonna wind this cloud over to here. Rain, rain, rain. Uh, and this becomes a thunder cloud because uh, I didn't mention this, but you might have seen it on that page we were looking at a moment ago. Uh, this one. In the lower left there, 
A light cloud becomes a thundercloud if it ever holds four or more water drops. So in addition to the collision thing making it a thundercloud, also the amount of water in there makes it a thundercloud. And then we just played rain. So we can, or we played wind. So we can vote wind or rain or drop the harvest. I might drop the harvest. Actually. I would really love it if that harvest would occur. So I think we're going to get, well, I guess the harvest occurring right now doesn't help any. We need the rain to happen first. Shoot. Okay, I'm going to vote rain, actually. That's what we'll do with our wind card. And then we're going to play frost. We'll play two frosts. And we'll just set up a new cloud over the cotton for us to work on later. But honestly, mostly this is about being allowed to vote sun again. Uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have voted rain, because now, now unless blue votes sun, sun is not going to happen. Yeah, that might have been an error. Oh well. Okay, we got the reshuffle card. When the Southern Winds player draws the reshuffle card, you just throw the whole back de deck back together, shuffle it, and draw a different card. Okay, double winter is or double frost is a hugely bad card for us, for them to have pulled. So this creates a new cloud. There's only one tile where that can happen, so that's the tile where it happens. With two drops in it. And then double winter vote. Ouch. So now blue is gonna take two vote wins, and there's really nothing we can do about it. Frost and then wind, huh? You know what? There is something we might be able to do about it. I was going to just pass, but if we play our rain and vote rain, there's a possibility that we'll be able to make the weather like f the two resolving spaces like frost rain or something. I'm going to do it. We're going to we're just going to play a rain action. And we're going to rain Boy, what what is even helpful to drop? Nothing, really, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it matters too much. Uh, so when we play the rain action, we can rain any one drop from up to two clouds we are present in. Uh, right now, there's very little water on the actual fields. So raining isn't raining drops out of our clouds isn't going to get any field to its scoring threshold. This doesn't actually seem great. It's up to two clouds. Can I choose not to? Yeah, up to two clouds. So we could just choose not to actually drop anything. I mean, a lot of stuff's going to fall out of the clouds when the rain happens anyway, thanks to the uh, the fact that so many of them are thunderclouds. You know what? I'm going to rain one out of here. Because we only need one drop to stay here to score the uh, second place on the potato. But the wind effect could end up pushing one of our discs up here, and we could take second place on the grass, too, for very little effort. But I think that's the only one I actually want to drop. And then we're going to vote rain. And this does give the Southern Winds player another turn, but if they draw a vote for frost or sun or rain, it's good for us. As long as they don't vote wind, then they don't get two vote wins anymore. Okay, Frost is great. So that is remove a disc. Wait, what is that? Or remove a drop? Uh, remove one of your drops. Your always refers to the player on the solo cards. So remove one of my drops from the selected tile. Uh, oh, that's a really unfortunate. Well, there's only one place where we even have a drop, so that's the place where it happens. Oh no, my planning. Yep, then check the crop for drying out. It turns out it was already pretty dry. And then they vote winter, which is, or vote frost, which is great for us. That doesn't change anything about the voting. Now we pass, obviously. Uh, so we enter the weather phase. I would love it if a harvest... We're pretty likely to see a harvest next turn. I would love it if a harvest happened soon. So we're going to be processing uh, frost, and then I get to choose either wind or rain. Gee, I wonder which one I will select. 
So, let's do the frost first. All the clouds become thunder clouds. When this rain happens, it's going to be it's going to be a big deal. And that is a vote win for blue. And then, obviously, we have this rain effect. So when the rain happens, all the thunder clouds rain all of their drops. So, This is... Oh, well, I don't know what the heck just happened there. Okay, this drop is supposed to be here. This cloud is supposed to not be on the table anymore. Probably the problem is that I'm not giving them... Uh, not giving them time to complete their scripted movement. Here, you guys just get over here. We'll deal with you later. Okay, so this is the board state as of the end of that rain. Uh, that means that this is now growing... This is now growing. I think everything's growing. Uh, there's a special cactus tile for the cactus. Because, you know, you need to be able to indicate that other state should it happen. Uh, this one is not growing. And this one is. And that's a vote win for us. I don't know if this is a good position or not, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, now that all of our uh, drops are on the ground, we're going to have a lot of trouble moving them around, obviously. When when you have all your water in clouds, it's really easy to just wind them over to places. But now the only way to, to move the droplets on the table is for the wind weather effect to go off. It does seem that it's likely. Um, so we just got to be ready for that. We got to make sure that we are in a sensible position when that occurs. All right, uh, harvest phase, there is no harvest, and then it's cleanup time. Let's get ourselves a new hand and move into the penultimate turn. So, no sun. No sun cards. That actually looks like it's going to be just fine. So we would like to get a little bit of water onto that cactus to really ruin it. <laughs> We'd like to get a little water onto the cotton here. And it would be nice if we could get a drop onto the grass so that we could take second place and, and cut down that scoring differential. And then over here we got a we got a battle for the coffee. So I think we're probably gonna lead with a frost. Probably that probably that's fairly uncontroversial. Uh, give me one of those clouds that I just kind of threw over here haphazardly. I'm gonna put it over the coffee. I would like to win the coffee, if possible. All right, and then do we want to try to push the harvest? There's always a harvest at the end of turn four. So the question we're faced with right now is, do we want to try to have a harvest now and then a second harvest that we're really going to scramble for? Or do we think it would be better for us to just continue building up our position and only do the one? To be perfectly honest with you, I kind of want the harvest to happen at the end of round three. I mean, I guess... If we just maintain our voting lead, we might be okay here. As it stands now, the harvest is pretty good for blue. I should note, um, the way wheat works, you can see first place is two plus a wheat token. All the other places get three points. Uh, the value of a wheat token is that at the end of the game, up here in the top right, the player with the highest number of wheat tokens will score 12 bonus points. So it would be really nice to resolve the wheat once, like exactly once would be cool. So maybe we're not trying to push harvest. You know what? I'm going to try to maintain I'm going to I'm going to try to solidify my vote lead on sun. Let's just keep winning votes. For right now I think that's our strategy. And then I kind of want to just play frost again get another cloud up. I think I'm going to do that. We're going to play Frost again. So two Frost cards for that, and we will cloud the cactus. Try to get in on this a little bit. Is it better to get in on this or the grass? Oh, this is fine. This, this, will, this is good. Okay. And then we're voting. So do we want to put another one on Sun? I mean, obviously, you don't want to put more votes down than you need to to win a space, because that's wasteful. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna vote. Here's the thing: we're definitely not gonna place another sun vote after this because we're just holding wind and rain. I am gonna vote sun one more time. This gives us. That might be overdoing it, but it gives us like stability. That's probably it's probably too much. Whatever, I'm doing it. All right, southern winds immediately vote sun twice. So feeling a little bit better that I did this. And that is... What is that space? That is... Add one neutral drop to the cloud on the selected tile. Okay, so we do actually have to roll for selection because there's more than one legal target. Number six. Curse you. That is really not where I wanted that to land. It would have been so nice for us if they had added a drop here because then the cloud raining out would have spoiled the cactus by itself. Okay, that's a little that's a little tricky for us. So we have wind and rain. We could do sun followed by Oof, boy, I don't know. Is this supposed to be a thundercloud? When did this get thunder? Because there were no clouds at the beginning of the round, right? Yeah, because we had our, our weather effects last time were frost and rain, so everything got cleared. I don't think this is. I'm gonna I'm gonna set this back to normal. I think that might have been an error, because there weren't there wasn't a cloud collision. A disc just got added, but that wouldn't have made it a thundercloud because there's not enough. Yeah, I think it's not supposed to be. Okay, um, we could make it a thundercloud, though. If we... If we, like, drop two winds to make sun, and we add two disks to this cloud, then when the sun weather effect fires and it doubles blue's disks and then allows me to double mine, it'll turn this into a thundercloud. It'll, it'll turn this into a cloud that has eight disks in it. So it'll immediately rain down. I think that's a good idea. So we're going to do two winds as a sun to add two disks here. And then I probably do not need to... Um, now it should be a thundercloud. Well, the invisible bolt is toggleable. There we go. Um, so now we're looking at vote sun or vote wind. I think I vote. We're about to we're about to vote rain. Or we're about to play a rain effect. I think. It feels like voting wind is pretty bad. Yeah, the, there's no way we get victory on the wind vote. There's no way we get parity, even. But I don't want to reduce the harvest count. I only want there to be one harvest, I'm pretty sure. So I think I do just vote sun? Is that real dumb? I, th I probably shouldn't have voted sun before, but now I should vote sun. I'm not gonna... I'm not going to let the last play change my mind. I think this is the right move. Okay. So then we're going to play rain more to get a vote on rain than for any other reason. That's not going to matter now. Uh, I am going to, let's see, do I think we can ruin this? You know what? I don't. I'm just going to rain this now. We're just going to get this down so that we can um, at least reduce their scoring differential on that tile. And then I'm going to vote rain as preparation for next turn's voting. All right, Southern Winds. They are going to vote Wind. A cloud with a cloud with only your droplets moves southeast. Is that? Yes, move a pure cloud southeast. Uh, I believe there is no such cloud. Yeah. Uh, and then vote Wind is no vote at all. And I am going to pass. I think the situation we're in now is just fine. 
Okay, so that ends the action phase of round three. We go into weather time. So we're doing sun and wind, obviously. So when sun happens, you double this, and then I also double that. Okay, and then because this has eight uh, drops in it, it immediately rains out. That's that's not where you go. I must have I broke the scripting somehow. It worked um, totally flawlessly through the first two games, and then <laughs> you know how it is as soon as you start recording. All right, so that's a vote win for me, and all of these are deleted. All right, let me look at the timing on this. How, do, how does this work? If this... Oh, never mind. This was this was developed before the sun happened, so it doesn't even matter how the timing works. Sorry, I should have put the disc on this side when we put it down initially. Now that the sun weather has happened, it is fully sprouting. Look at all the points. Did I overdo it on discs? I don't know. Maybe. It's not like we were just throwing them on there, though. We, need the, we needed to do a bunch of discs to make the rain happen for sure. I think it was worth the... Um, it's worth the insurance. Okay, and then uh, wind happens next. So that's a vote win for blue. So let me hold on. What is the deal with wind in one player? After resolving your wind weather effect, which is just move one of my discs somewhere, right? Move any one drop from a field to an adjacent field. Okay, so not just mine. Interesting. After doing that, one of my droplets on fields 3, 4, 5, and 6 move northward. Okay. That gives us some interesting options. I think we're going to move this over here. And then this moves up, this moves up, this moves up. That was not that I should have done those in the other order, but this is the, the correct game state after that. We might be able to take this cactus now. And we're still we're in absolutely no danger of not scoring out the coffee. I feel pretty good about our position here. All right, uh, and then clean up. Still no harvest because I have been intentionally slow rolling the harvest and the Southern Winds player has not been drawing his harvest cards. He does have... Um, he, I'm referring to the wind as a he. The wind does have two cards that uh, that have harvest on them, so it's just a little bit of weird luck there. All right, let's get our cards for the final round. All right, we did not get any frost. That's a shame, since there's no clouds. I was really... Okay, I mean, we're going to play a frost early. But obviously, you get to start. So, uh, vote sun... Reduce the harvest count, and that is worth a point. Yeah, we've scored almost no points during the game. This is very unusual, by the way. Uh, and that is... Is that add a drop to an existing cloud? Yep, add a neutral drop to the cloud on the selected tile. Well, there is no cloud on any tile, so not even possible. All right, I'm pretty sure we need to play Frost. Let's... I think wind is going to be less useful now. I'm going to drop two winds as a frost. And we're going to start ourselves a cloud on the cactus? Maybe. It's either the cactus or the cotton. Yeah, ta taking... Narrow dominance on the cactus would be really valuable. And then I think we're going to play... No, no, no. We're going to do it on the co on the cotton. Because our second play is going to be sun. And I don't want to put three droplets on the cactus. Okay, so that was a frost play. We can vote. You know what? I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to reduce the harvest die. Turning the harvest die over to the harvest face is worth two points, and I am stealing. I'm stealing your points. Okay. Then for our second play, like I said, I think we're going to do sun, since we have an abundance of suns. We'll just go deep on this. And we will throw a vote on sun. Alright, what do you got? You got reshuffle. 
God, the art on all the cards is so pretty. Okay, you really, really want that sun to happen. So two votes sun. Unfortunately, that's... Well, I said unfortunately. There is, in fact, a place where a drop can happen now, so... You do get to throw a drop in here, and that is totally worth a point. Also makes it a thundercloud, which is actually pretty relevant, because we do have rain weather uh, occurring. I should note, for understanding of the decision-making process, uh, just as there is always a uh, harvest at the end of the game, uh, there is always lots of weather at the end of the game. Uh, in the final round, every weather space with at least one vote on it is resolved, but it's still the case that only the two that have the most votes count for um, movement on the vote win track. So the fact that there's one disc on rain guarantees that the rain will happen even if other stuff uh, accumulates more. So, that's fine with me, though. That That's an okay outcome. I think what we want to do now is... Honestly, I think we frost again. Just frost over the cactus. I don't really know what else we could do. Yeah, so that's expensive. And we end up we end up just playing Sun after it, which is a little silly. Um, I'm going to vote Frost, so that we know that this will become a thundercloud, so that it will rain when the rain happens. Uh, and then we're gonna play Sun, and I'm I'm gonna add two drops to this cloud, not to the cactus cloud, for what I hope are obvious. No, never mind. I'm going to add one drop. We are out of drops. This is what happens when the harvest never comes. All of the water's on the board already. Alright, well, the Southern Winds player gets another go here. So, it's a good thing we took that last harvest point, because they would have gotten it otherwise. Uh, this is just put a droplet down onto one tile, right? This could be a little bit awkward for us. Yeah, take a neutral drop and put it directly onto the selected tile. We're really hoping not, uh, we're hoping not to see a three here. Okay, five. Five is the cotton. And then vote wind. Which is pretty good, actually. That denies us the, the points on that. Okay, and obviously we pass, so the action phase of the final round comes to an end. We enter the weather phase. So these are the two where the winds will be scored, but all three of these occur. So first off, frost weather. Nope. Oh. I, yep, I definitely broke the mod a little bit. It's fine. It, it put the bolts on the things. I'm sure this is related to me um, just mashing the <laughs> mashing the rain buttons. Uh, then this occurs. We get a sun. So uh, you double in all clouds, and then I double in a cloud. Except I don't. First of all, those aren't not, those aren't mine. Secondly, I don't have any drops. Uh, so no more doubling for me. That's a vote win for blue. No wind happens, and then the rain happens. Nobody gets a vote win on the tie, and uh, all of the thunderclouds rain out. We're going to be patient here. Just, like, do a good job. Okay, yep, it's still... I'm still blaming myself on this. Okay, so... This ended up being closer than I thought it was going to be, but we did, we did make it out. So this becomes growing. Look at it. It's beautiful. All right. That's all of the weather. May as well delete all the vote things now. So now we enter the harvest, and we actually do a harvest phase for the first time. So we just go tie, uh, field by field, check if they're scoring and how much they score. So right here, this is four points unchallenged for the blue player. I'd like to emphasize again that it's very unusual in my experience for the scores to be this low going into the end of the final turn. All right, right here we get two points for red and also that wheat tile. And as exactly one wheat tile has been distributed during the game, that feels pretty significant. Uh, and then after uh, scoring out the harvested tiles, the water would go back. But in this case, it doesn't matter because the game's over. All right, so right here, blue gets three points and red gets seven. Uh, right here, this worked out beautifully for us. Six points for red. 
and three points for blue. Uh, on this tile, it's five red and one blue, so 24 and 14. And then on this tile, because uh, the coffee is in full sprout, we get 10, blue gets five. This is a real blowout. <laughs> Uh, and then we do the uh, the final final scoring, which is 12 points for red on account of wheat. That's a wheat victory. And also, you go to 28 off of vote wins and 60. 60 is the score. That's a lot higher than, <laughs> than I saw in either in the in the two games I played prior to starting recording. Uh, I won one by like five points and lost the other one by five points. So I figured. Uh, you know what? The the base level of difficulty seems pretty reasonable, but uh, maybe I've now learned what I'm doing enough that I should turn it up. They do have some options in here for uh, modifying it so the AI has has a better shot. We'll maybe try some of this in the next game. Uh, but I think for right now, that is what a game of Petricor looks like. I love the way this game looks. I think that the... Uh, the the card playing like simultaneous voting and action mechanic is really slick and quite simple it's very easy to understand uh and also i just love a game that has a slightly unusual theme like sure there's a lot of games about farming but this is not a game where you are a farmer right if you play a lot of modern board games you probably know there are certain themes that uh tend to occur a lot and i really appreciate when people lean out of those in any way at all so that is going to be it for us for this episode Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, there's going to be at least two more of these today. Like I said, we're going to do a honeybee game and a cow game. And these are pretty short, so I might even be up for more. Let me know in the comments uh, how you're feeling about uh, the game. And of course, if you saw any rules mistakes. Because of the way I'm recording these, I will not see any comments prior to recording the next one. So if I screwed up the rules, I'm going to keep screwing them up. But... You'll get me in time for that third video, so I very much appreciate it for everyone who does that. Uh, come back a little later today for more, and we'll see you then.